Assalamu alaikum. So today we're going to keep working on pre-calculus general review. So uh, let's start with the first question. Here they asked me to solve the system algebraically. So here we have uh, x. So the first question, the first equation is x minus 2y plus 3z equal 11. The second equation is 4x plus 2y minus 3z equal 4. And third equation is 3x plus 3y minus z equal 4. As you notice on the first and second equations, the coefficient on y and z are the same, but they are opposite. Which means if I add the equation 1 with the equation 2, y and z will be eliminated. Which means it's better for me to use here uh, elimination than substitution. So always, when you have this type of question, read the whole thing and see the relationship between the equations. So the relationship between the equations will tell you what type of technique you should use, either substitution or elimination. If you have a lot of zero here, it's better to use matrices because it's more easier. So based on the way that you see how the setup of the equation are, choose your technique. So it's better for you to know all of them very well in order for you to choose which one can suit you for a specific question so here what I do I choose uh, elimination so I'm gonna do I'm gonna add the first equation with the second equation so in that case I will get my x right away so here I have x minus 2y plus 3z equal 11 and 4x plus 2y minus 3z equal 4 so when I add here what happened? This is 0, this is 0, this is 5x equal 15. So divide by 5. So my x will be 3. So you see, I'm done. Now what I do, I substitute 3 into one of the equations. So uh, let me choose an easy one. So I will choose the one, equation 1 and one, equation 3. So I, I pick, I put 3 here, minus 2. This is equation 1. y plus 3 z equal 11 you can choose 2 and 3 if you want but don't choose again 1 and 2 because you will not get the y and z so uh, 3 so I got 3 times 3 is 9 plus 3y minus z so I choose the first one and the third one because z has coefficient 1 so if I time this one by 3 I will eliminate the z then I will get my y right away so this is the, the idea behind so always look what you do before you start doing it. So think before you start doing the problem. All right, so here I'm going to minus 3 both sides and minus 9. So minus 3 here and minus 9. So I got minus. So this will give me minus 2y plus 3z equal 8. And here will give me 3y minus z equal minus 5 so I multiply the whole thing by 3 here so my system will be minus 2y plus 3z equal 8 and 9y minus 3z equal minus 15 so as you see here same coefficient different sign I add so when I add here I got 7y this is cancel out and this will be minus 7 so as you see here I got my y right away so 7y equal minus 7 so divide by 7 so y will be minus 1 so what you do next I pick the third equations it's more easy to get my z so you see I choose the one that gets me the answer easier so 3x minus plus 3y minus z equal 4 so if I switch this one here and I move this one here I got 3x plus 3y minus 4 equal z it's like I'm adding z here and subtraction 4 now I just substitute those here so I've got 3 times 3 is 9 minus 3 minus 4 equal z so 9 minus 7 equals z that means z is equal to 2 so my solution is x y z equal 3 minus 1 and 2 
this will be my answer for that system of equations to check just plug in those into any equations and you're gonna get the answer so if I plug in this into the first one so I got 3 minus minus 2 so is gonna be plus 2 plus 2 plus 6 so it's gonna be 3 plus 2 is 5 plus 6 is 11 and as you see you got 11 here alright so here which of the following is the vertex of x squared equal to y minus 2 here I think this is a uh, multiple choice questions so but I don't have those multiple those choice so here I'm gonna look for the vertex so what I do here x square equal to y minus 2 so what I do here I'm gonna add to both sides divide by 2 so I got x square plus 2 equal to y divide by 2 so I got half x square plus 1 equal y so it's the same thing if I have half x squared plus 0x plus 1 equal y. So what's the idea of the vertex? So the vertex of a quadratic, so because this is a quadratic function, so the vertex is minus b over twice a and 4ac minus b squared over 4a. So this is the formula for the vertex so or if you forgot this just substitute this into the equations f of x equal ax squared plus bx plus c because this is the equation of a quadratic function so you got your x value of the vertex substitute this one here you're gonna get that answer which is for ac minus b squared over 4a alright so what I need to do here I have my a is half b is 0 and c is equal to 1 so I just need to substitute those value here so 0 over 1 is 0 and here what I do this is 0 it's gone so I have 4 times half times 1 over 4 times half so 4 times half over 4 times half is 1 so I don't have to solve anything here so as you see here the vertex is 0 1 and this is my answer next question here so here they ask me to give the measure in er in the radian of the angle so here the angle start from that point and it move it move down that's mean keep in mind we have two direction we have the positive direction which is going on this direction and you have the negative direction so if it starts from here and go down, that means the angle is going to be negative. So I have the angle should be negative. And look at here, it make a full rotation. So that means I will have minus 2 pi because that's mean radian. So I'm going to make it as minus 2 pi. Or you can do it in degree, then uh, convert in radian if you want. So I can do it in minus 360. And here, uh, after I make the full rotation, I got I stop here. So what I do now, I have half rotation but we took off by over 6 from that half rotation so here what do we have we have minus or I'm gonna add so minus pi plus pi over 6 because here is half is minus pi but we took off pi over 6 from pi so it's like I'm adding pi over 6 to minus pi so it's gonna be here or anyway so here I will do minus 2 pi plus here is going to give me minus 5 pi over 6 if I make common denominator I will end up having 5 pi over 6 so it's the same thing is minus 2 5 6 pi if you want to do common denominator you're going to end up having minus 17 over 6 pi so either you have this answer or this answer it will give you the same uh, the same uh, is the same the same thing so if you want to do it in terms of degree here so if you want to do it in degree then convert to uh, radian so here should be minus 180 and pi over 6 is 30 so it's the same thing if I have 360 minus 360 minus 150 so that's exactly what's going on here then what you do you add them so it's going to be minus 510 this is degree so to change it to radian you times it by pi and divide by 180 so it will give you the answer uh, in uh, radian so here if I divide by 3 here I got 17 if I divide by 3 here I got 6 and as you see same same
same answer. So this is the answer for that question. All right, for the next one, they asked me to convert this value in radian to degrees. So this is straightforward. So it's 7 pi over 15. It's the same thing as 7 over 15 pi. So I'm going to convert pi in radian in degree because the pi is 180. So it's going to be 7 15 times 180. And I'm done. So it's going to be 7. And if I s divide one 180 by 15, it will give me uh, I believe uh, 10, 12. So it's going to be 12. So it's going to be 84 degree. I hope it's clear. For this uh, equations here, they give me cosine is equal 3 fourths, and they ask me to find out sine of pi over 2 plus theta. So here we have three ways to do it. Either we use this formula, sine pi over 2 plus angle is cosine of that angle, or we can use the sum formula, sine of a plus b is sine a sine uh, sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b or we can use a circle so from the circle we get the answer so I'm going to show you the three of them and you will uh, decide which one is good for you for the first one so I just apply the formula so as you see here it's straightforward so I just put here this is 3 fourth because it's given to me because this is equal to this so if I don't know this formula so I want to use the sum formula so here is pi over 2 plus theta so it's the same thing if I have here sine pi over 2 cos theta plus cos pi over 2 sine theta so we know that sine pi over 2 is 1 so it's going to be 1 times cos theta and cosine pi over 2 is 0 0 times sine is 0 so as you see here is cos theta and this is 3 over 4 so in terms of circles so it's straightforward so look at here so this is my sine this is my cosine so if this is my angle you see this is my theta here so what did I did I add pi you see from here to here is theta so I add pi over 2 to here so that's mean I create another theta here so this is the other that I created here so as you see here if I project that point so that land is if I project here is the same thing as that one they are the same so this angle is pi over 2 plus theta so as you see the length of the cosine is the same thing as the length of the sine so here this is the length of sine of pi over 2 plus theta this is the length of cosine of theta you see is the same length which means those two must be equal so sine pi over 2 plus theta is has the same length as cosine of theta so therefore it has a value of 3 fourths so either way try to choose the one that suits you for that type of question all right for next so here they give me cotangent of the angle is 3 and they ask me to find out secant so the best way to deal with that type of question is to use a triangle so we know that cotangent is adjacent over hypotenuse over uh, opposite sorry so cotangent of any angle so this is my angle cotangent is the adjacent over opposite so here is 3 over 1 which means that the adjacent is 3 and the opposite is 1 so I just need to find out the hypotenuse which is going to be square root of 9 3 square which is 9 plus 1 square which is 10 so it's going to be square root of 10 so what is secant 
secant of the angle. Secant is 1 over cosine, that means it's going to be the hypotenuse over the adjacent. Hypotenuse over adjacent. So I know my hypotenuse is square root of 10, adjacent is 3, and I'm done. Those type of questions, the triangle is the best way and is the easiest way. Try to master the triangle. Here, they ask me the range of this function. So here, this is cosine. And the way that I'm going to show you work for sine and cosine. So uh, keep in mind that cosine of any expression is between 1 and 1 and minus 1. Any expression, whatever the expression we have inside, the cosine, that's mean the output of that expression with cosine is between minus 1 and 1. So we cannot go beyond that. So what I do here, I use the order of operation to find the range. So here, what I do first, I multiply the whole thing by 2. You see the order, start with unification, we don't start with addition subtraction. So here I multiply first, so I multiply the whole thing by 2. Then I subtract 3, it will give me the range. So here I start with the expressions, cosine 3x plus 1 is between 1 and minus 1. So I multiply every step or every term by 2. So it's going to be a minus 2 is less than 2 cosine of 3x plus 1, which is less than 2. Then I minus 3. So I got minus 5 is less than 2 cosine of 3x plus 1 minus 3 is less than minus 1. You see this is my function, y. So y is between minus 5 and minus 1. And this is my range. So the range will be a closed interval, minus 5, minus 1. I hope it's it's clear. You can do the same idea with sine, but don't do it with tangent and cotangent. Because tangent and cotangent, they have only number as range, from minus infinity to infinite. For sine and cosine, you can use the same concept. So put sine between minus 1 and 1, and use the order of operation in order for you to get to the range. So order, start with multiplication. If I have multiplication, do multiplication. So I hope it's uh, it's clear. Next question here, so which of the following is 1 minus 2 sine square 75 equal to? So here I have uh, 1 minus 2 sine square of 75 degree. So uh, if I know my formula, I know that 1 minus 2 sine square of an angle is cosine twice that angle, which is a double angle formula. If I don't know that, so what I need to do, I need to use other, other way. So uh, uh, with this, I can will get one minus two sine square of theta, which is seventy-five theta here. I need to substitute by seventy-five. So here will be seventy-five degree. So it's going to be cosine of twice seventy-five. So which means that I will have cosine of one fifty. Uh, cosine of on 150 is the same thing as minus cosine of 30. So it's the same thing. So this is exactly... Uh, I like to work with the, tar the circle because the circle tells me almost like everything I need to know about the trig. So this is 150. So this is... This is 150. And uh, whatever left is 30. And if I expand or if I project that 50 on this, so as you see here, the same angle we have down here, which is here is 30. That's mean the cosine, which is the length here, is the same thing as that length. The difference is this is positive and this is negative. So which means that this is the same thing as minus cosine of 30. Uh, cosine of 30 is square root of 3 over. So it's going to be minus square root of 3 over 2. And this will be my answer. So if I forget the formula here, so I can use the 1 minus 2 sine square of 75 degree. is the same thing as 1 minus 
sine square of 75 degree minus sine square of 75 degree and this is the same thing as cosine so it's going to be cosine square of 75 degree minus sine square of 75 degree and this again will lead you to the formula of double angle formula which is cosine of 2 times 75 degree because we know that cosine of 2 theta is cosine square minus sine square so as you see here you have cosine square minus sine square which is going to give me the double angle so here is going to be cosine of 150 and I use the same idea so it's the same thing as minus cosine of 30 which is minus square root of 3 over 2 so I hope it's it's clear next so find the exact value of sine tangent inverse of 3 half so the idea behind this is the following so you know that the tangent here of an angle is 3 half this is exactly what do we have so which means that the angle is what is a tangent inverse of 3 half but what we're looking for we're looking, we're looking for sine of that angle is what which is sine of tangent minus 1 3 half which is tangent inverse of 3 half so it's exactly what's going on we're looking for sine of the angle that give me tangent equal 3 half so I'm looking for sine of that angle which its tangent is 3 half so it's exactly what they ask you for give me the sine of the angle which the tangent of that angle is 3 half so I'm gonna start with this idea which is I'm gonna use a triangle here so I know that the tangent is 3 half tangent of the angle is 3 half and we know that the tangent is what is the opposite over adjacent so this is the angle this is the opposite is 3 this is the adjacent is 2 so now I can find out my hypotenuse which is this one square plus this one square so 4 plus 9 is 13 so this is going to be my hypotenuse and I know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse which is going to be 3 over square root of 13 so if I'm talking both sides by square root of 13 it's going to be 3 square root of 13 over 13 so I hope this is this is clear next question so here in the circle of 10 feet radius an arc associated with this with a central angle of 36 degree so it has length so we're looking for the length so we know the formula of the length is the same thing as the formula of the uh, circumference which is uh, the circumference is 2 pi r but what is 2 pi? It pi is the full circle that's mean this is the angle the circumference is a full circle that's mean the full circle has angle 2 pi so here is the same thing as the angle made by the radius here the angle by the made by the radius is a full circle which is going to be 2 pi here we're looking for a specific one for a specific angle so we, we change this 2 pi by the angle now the angle is 36 but we need to make it in radian so it's going to be 36 times pi divided by 180 r, r is 10 so it's clear so here you see I can simplify this this is 36 is twice so it's going to be 2 pi and I know that 2 pi is 3.14 which is this is the approximation so it's going to be 3.14 times 2 which is 6.28 feet so this will be my length for the arc made by 36 degree with the radius 10 feet all right next question here they ask me to find the direction of the angle so as you see here this uh, is uh, a coordinate of a point so I'm just creating a circle here so I'm not specify here so here they asked me to find the direction of the angle so I know that the x is positive and y is negative that's mean x positive y ne negative that's mean the angle is on the third the, uh, fourth quadrant because this is uh, positive 
and this one is negative here it's positive this is negative this is positive and here we have both of them must be negative mm -hmm. but here mm -hmm. x positive y negative this mean is on the fourth quadrant so I know my location of the angle so it's here as you see here so I know it's it's a negative angle so what I do here I need to find out what's the angle so to do so what I do I use tangent here so tangent tangent is always y over x so tangent of that angle is y over x and I know that y over x is minus 2 over 2 square root of 3 which is minus square root of 3 over 3 so which angle you mean square root of 3 over 3 is 30 degree or pi over 6 so uh, tangent 30 degree is pi over 6 but here this is minus so it's going to be minus 30 equal minus square root of 3 over 2 over 3 sorry That means uh, the, du uh, the direction angle is minus 30 degree or minus pi over 6, whatever you want to choose, either minus 30 degree or minus pi over 6 if they ask you for radian. So this is minus 30. So always use this idea, which is this idea comes from the polar coordinate. So to find out the angle, we use the tangent, which is y over x. And from there, you will get your angle. There we go, we, talk, we just talk about polar coordinates. Okay, compute the polar coordinates of the point having a rectangular coordinate minus 1 and minus square root of 3. So here, the coordinate of a polar, the coordinate of the component of the polar coordinates are the radius and the angle. So I have to find out what is the radius and what is the angle. So we know that the radius square is x square plus y square. So if I use a circle here, So if this is my, for example, my radius, as you see here, this is the component, this is the x component of the radius, and this is the y component of the radius. So this is my x, this is my y. So this means this length again is my y. So to get my radius, as you see here, this is a triangle, so r squared equals x squared plus y squared. And this is the angle made by the radius. And if I use a tangent, so it's going to be opposite over the hypotenuse. So those are my two components that help me get the uh, component of polar coordinate. So it's going to be y over x. But you have to be careful here. You see, the angle can be anywhere. So based on my information here, we have x is negative and y is negative. That's mean uh, the point is on the third quadrant. So here. So this is exactly where is my point is here. So I need to make sure to find out the exact angle and the radius. For the radius is always positive, but here the angle is not something between 0 and 90. So it's greater than either 180. So I need to uh, see what to do here. So first let me find out the radius. So we have r square is equal to minus 1 square pl ma plus minus square root of 3 square so r square equal 1 plus 3 which is 4 which means that r is 2 so this is the radius so for the angle so it's minus square root of 3 over minus 1 which is just square root of 3 and I believe this is uh, Square root of 3 is pi over 3, I believe, yes. So that means the angle is pi over 3. But you see, this is if it's between 0 and 90, or between 0 and pi over 2. But here, the angle is, is bigger. So let me show you 
the formula for that. So if the uh, if the x coordinate is positive, so always the angle is the tangent inverse of y over x. This is for the polar coordinate. If x is negative, so what you do, you add pi to tangent inverse of y over x. So here my x is negative, so we don't worry about the y, just worry about the x. If x is negative, you add pi. If it's positive, you add nothing, just leave it as it is. Whatever answer you got is your answer. If x is equal to 0, so either it's going to be pi over 2 or minus pi over 2, so it depends of the question. So here, what I do here to find my exact angle, I'm going to add pi to pi over 3. So here, plus pi, so this is going to be 4 pi over 3, and this will be my coordinate, my polar coordinate for that uh, rectangular coordinate. So r will be 2, and the angle will be 4 pi over 3. So those are the key to find out the angle. If the if x coordinate is positive, so the angle is between zero and and whatever you got, it's whatever you got here. So it can be between zero be between zero and one eighty. But if it's negative, as you see here, it's below. It's going to be between one eighty and three sixty. So be be careful. Right, next question. So find the exact value of cosine 105. So here I'm going to use the, uh, I think the sum formula. So I he, I have here cosine of 105 is cosine of 45 plus 60. Yeah. So we know what is cosine of 45, and we know what is uh, sine of 45. We know what is cosine of 60, and we know what is sine of 60. So if you forgot those uh, those value, so what you do, so s write down the the common angle we use for sine and cosine, which are zero. We have 30. Uh, we have 45. We have 60, and we have 90. So those are the common angle we use. So then what you do here, we have you start from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then what you do is you take the square root of each one. This will give you, by the way, the sine sign output. Then you divide the whole thing by 2. For the cosine, you do the opposite direction. If here you start from 0, the cosine is over 4. Then you take the square root of each and divide by 2. So as you see here for uh, for sine, sine of 0 is 0, this is 1 half, this is square root of 2 over 2, this is square root of 3 over 2, and this is 1. For cosine is going to be 1, square root of 3 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, half, and 0. So those are the value you need to know to do that question. So we know that cosine of a plus b, which is the sum formula, is cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b. So here is going to be cosine of 105, which is the same thing as cosine of 45, which is a plus 60, which is b, so which is the same thing as cosine 45 cosine 60 minus sine 45 sine 60 and I just need to substitute my value here so cosine 45 is square root of 2 over 2 sine of 45 again is square root of 2 over 2 cosine of 60 is half sine of 60 is square root of 3 over 2 and I put my minus multiply, so the answer will be square root of 2 over 4 minus square root of 6 over 4. So it's the same thing as square root of 2 minus square root of 6 over 4, and this will be your answer. Last question here. Here they ask me to find out the area of that triangle. They give me the side. So here 
You see, there is a long formula to find out the area of the triangle. So, uh, but when you when you have this type of question, check the relationship between the side. Like for example, you see three plus four is seven, but this is square root. I cannot just like x square root is going to be okay. This is true. So in that in, in that case, what I do, I need to make it square. If I take this one square plus this one square, give me that one square. This tells me that this is a right triangle. So we know that the right triangle it has what a square plus b square equals c square. So this is work only for a right triangle. If it's not right, it cannot be equal. So if I notice that if I take this one square plus this one square, give me that one square, that means what I'm dealing with is a right triangle. So that means I have a right triangle that has a hypotenuse 7, one side is 3, the other side is 4. So this is square root of 7, this is square root of 3, this is square root of 4. So if it's a right triangle, so the area is easy to find because this is going to be my base, this is going to be my high right away. So notice the relationship between the side because sometimes they will not give you a question like that without other steps that you should do by yourself to make it easy to do so please be careful on those so here if I take square root of 3 square plus square root of 4 square it will give me square root of 7 square because this is 3 plus 4 equals 7 so what's the area for a triangle the area is half base times high so it's going to be half what is the base is square root of 3 what is the high square root of 4 which is 2 so it's going to be half square root of 3 times 2 so cancel so a square root of 3 is my area for that triangle so I hope it's, it's clear what we cover today so uh, please if you have any comment about the way I present or anything that helped me improve my way of teaching so do so, do so it will help me a lot thank you for watching and uh, salamu alaikum